one. Welcome to the Hale Varsity Post Game Reaction Show, Nebraska Illinois 2021 edition. Uh, Nebraska falls to the Illini 30 to 22 in Week Zero, first college football game out of the gates, and uh, definitely not the way anyone in red wanted it to go. I'm joined today by Greg Smith. Greg, was there any box on the Nebraska Nightmare opener bingo card left unmarked for you? Boy. I don't think I don't think so. Like a pick six, maybe would, would have done it. Uh, oh nope, I got it. Are you giving up like a special teams touchdown? Yeah, that that was that was the only thing, like a kickoff return. But the, like one of the big positives that will end up getting buried was Nebraska <laughs> finding um, a kickoff specialist. That that happened. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> right? it's, it's not going to get buried here. So Nebraska. <laughs> Fixed the kickoffs. They all went for touchbacks. I think that's all we've got for today. We'll see you next week. Yep, that's it. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's 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 actually try and dig into this a little bit. Um, and I want to start on defense. In my estimation, the better side of the ball on Saturday for Nebraska. Greg, what did you see out of the black shirts? I saw consistently good effort. Um, I thought from the black shirts, I, the, something that I just kept noticing over and over, and this was on both tackles for loss. It felt like on the sacks that occurred and even just on regular tackles, it always felt like there were multiple guys around the ball. I'm sure that was not actually the case 100% of the time, but it felt like that. And to me, that speaks to the effort that they were playing with. Um, I thought outside of a couple of plays, and this is going to happen to every team, they were not just huge bust um, out there either, like just to the to the untrained eye watching it live. Um, so that those were encouraging. I, I do not think that, and this will be, I think, a topic of discussion, that the 30 points given up were indicative of how they played at all. Um, and I think that they were far and away the better part of the, the game for Nebraska between the offense and the defense. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And really defensively, you're talking 21 points, uh, one scoop and score plus a safety, right. like 21 points should win you, should win you a football game the majority of the time. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be a good deal of frustration on the black shirt side. Now they, they weren't perfect. There was a moment early in the game where, so I expected Nebraska to be able to stop the run pretty well. And I think today provided pretty good evidence of that. Um, for, for the most part, and, and I think that'll continue. My big question was, well, can they get in the backfield and make those negative plays? Um, do they have somebody who can get after the passer when they have those opportunities? And, and they still had to scheme those, you know, scheme some of those opportunities. But early on, I was like, well, wow, if they add that element to this defense, uh, they could really be really be on to something. And they, I think they had nine tackles for loss total, three of which um, were sacks. So that part of it was good. Only had one pass breakup, which you'd like to see. I know Shenander would like to see them, you know, be more active in, in that front, just getting hands on the football. Um, it creates kind of turnover opportunities. And so it was a mix of, of good and bad. And during that third quarter, man, that, that opening drive of the second half was just exactly the wrong thing at the wrong time. But at that point, I, I remember looking at the plays that I don't remember what the exact numbers were, but Illinois had run, I think, 20 more plays in Nebraska at that point. And it, it ended up evening out um, by the end of the game. But even coming out of halftime on a day that kind of sweltering, it wasn't a surprise to see a little bit of fatigue there. But overall, defensively, I think there was enough good there. Um, and you take nine points off the board, uh, off their total at least. Um, and like I said, 21 points should get you a win most of the time, but it doesn't because of reasons, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Scott Frost called it the, the same movie uh, more, than, more than once. Adrian Martinez, he, he went with literature and he said it's the same story. Um, what do we do with this, Greg? I don't know. And I don't think is, and I think as Adrian Martinez said, like we had the answer to that, that the answer would be different. Um, but I do think that there just is something to 
the way that this team has looked from year one to now, especially on offense, I think that we, I honestly think that we have to continue to narrow this down for the sake of fairness um, based off of what we've seen, because we have seen the defense improve in a lot of these areas in ways that we have not seen from the offense and a portion, I guess, of the special teams, right? And so when we stick to the offense in particular, like it just feels like, with that it's the same old movie that this is what this offense is it is an offense that is fully capable of moving the football but it is also an offense that at any time can have a back-breaking penalty or costly mistake in the form of a turnover and not only just a turnover a turnover that goes for a scoop and score right like it's there's always some sort of danger like that lurking around the corner for this offense and that has always been the case uh for the last well now four seasons yeah a scoop and score right before the half which i remember at the start of the drive i was kind of like you know how how vanilla does nebraska play this do they like you know one of those kind of classic into half drives where you're like well let's see if a couple things work and if they don't right. we'll just kind of sit on it uh, it's never really been nebraska style um, nebraska lost the coin toss and virtually had no choice but to take the ball first but they typically do anyway right. and you're just looking at that kind of you know coaches talk a lot about the middle eight um the four minutes before each half and Illinois completely dominated that section of the game. So a turnover is a turnover for a scoop and score hurts you no matter when, but it may have been a little bit more damaging at that particular moment, knowing Illinois was going to get the ball in, in the second half. And then they came out and executed exactly what they needed to, you know, the, this offense, it, it remains a mystery because you have the mistakes, the things that you can point to. Like I personally checked off my nightmare Nebraska opener bingo card with the, the shoddy snap, um, which Nebraska recovered from technically, but yeah. still um, that drive going as long as, it's di- as it did was almost as good as a stop for, for Illinois. Um, but you see guys open and, you know, we know that there's a couple of the, the missed touchdowns and that's been a constant throughout this whole era of you can see that the stuff is there um but just kind of the inability to execute kind of at key times uh and then the mistakes and it'd be tough for any offense to overcome like if we ever got you know and i have to think all the way back to 2018 to games where i was like where i don't remember any of that stuff i just remember like oh this thing's rolling and it was against minnesota that year and it was against illinois and i haven't felt that way too often since Right. And that's the the thing is, is that the promise of that, the promise of it being, okay, this thing is rolling. It's not so far out of reach. And that is what, and I think you and I actually maybe talked about this preseason, is that that is the thing that ultimately I think frustrates people more than anything, is that it's not as if, you know, people are saying, okay, we need you to go from a low 20s per game offense to a 55 point per game outfit. And, you know, we've got to get this huge infusion of talent to Lincoln to be able to do that. Then you had to change this scheme. No, it's not necessarily that. And not saying that if they hit these open plays, they'd be scoring 50 plus points, but they'd be scoring a lot more. Um, And then it really gets compounded with the fact that this is now, is this the 12th one score loss? under frost is it 12 or 13 we i believe this is 13 they're now okay. five and 13 um and i believe during the broadcast they put up a, a chiron that north carolina was the only one with more with right. with 13 so i guess if whoever the tar heels play in the opener if they want to stay in the <laughs> lead of this uh terrible race that nobody wants to <laughs> right. win uh, right. they'll have to lose by one score next week right but that's how you end up with that right and that's the thing is that with all of the things that we've seen all of the special teams mishaps all of the penalties um the different you know uneven play we're still talking about a whole lot of one score games that if you were to get a touchdown instead of a field goal here and there that changes games. And I think that that's what's really frustrating, but at the same time, that's a lot more frustrating in year two than it is just maddening in year four. And I think that we're we're at an interesting point with that part of it in year four now. Yeah, like, you know, the start of any season is, you know, 
filled with some hope and uh, just kind of anything's possible and, and sort of the worst possible thing is to come back and it feel like nothing is different. Right. Um, and that's what we got. Uh, you know, there's still 11 more games to go, which <laughs> uh, <laughs> you may not be that excited about now, but, you know, eventually we'll, we'll get back into it and Nebraska will play more games. Um, I, I always try to like Nebraska could have looked as good as possible today. And I still, at some point would have said, yeah, you know, there's still a lot of season left to play. That's still right. true. Nobody wants to hear it right now. I get it. Um, but there's just, it's there. I think specifically with the offense and based on how the defense played today, you know, I came in thinking Nebraska's ceiling this year is determined by its offense. Uh, Nebraska's offense, when you see those kind of near misses in the games, like I don't have a ton of worry about what Nebraska does in game. It's, but it, under the theory of, you know, everything kind of comes down to coaching. You're either coaching it to happen or you're allowing it to happen, whatever, you know, like old cliche. Like the only question that matters for Nebraska going forward is they have got to get figured out how, how do you eliminate the Cam Taylor Britt decision on the punt? Um, And then I'm not, not specifically throw him under the bus, but you know, it happened. Um, The penalty was, was a weird thing, but it totally flipped that game. Like, the one thing that kind of distressed me a little bit uh, just as an observer from the post-game press conference is, you know, Scott Frost said that they've never gotten that spark. And I kind of look at that and say, you can't wait for it. You got to like create it. And I I just, it worries me when I hear that over and over again of like, well, we're just waiting for something good to happen and things will start rolling. And it could be true, but what if it doesn't come? Like you got to go out there and create it, in my opinion. And kind of on that note, so so what does today do, Greg? For well, where were you at wins wise for this team coming into the year? So what's really interesting about that is the only time I've ever given my official win prediction was on Derek Peterson's podcast, the Varsity Club, and I actually got messages with angry Husker fans afterwards. So I will, I guess, repeat it that I actually said that they would go. I thought they'd go five and seven. Um, and so I, I'm about at the same spot. Um, maybe this puts me at four and eight only because I, I would have had this game in that column uh, for the win column. But I'm, it's, I'm largely in the same spot that I was in coming into the season. Yeah, I, I was more in the seven and five category. And this might take it back to, to six and six, which may sound insane right now. I, I understand that. But like, if they get to six and six, you know, it's going to, they could still like steal a game that I wouldn't have had, you know, that's, that's right. possible too. Um, so yeah, I don't think for me, it drastically changes that, but it certainly didn't make me feel, uh, feel better about, uh, oh yeah, they're going to, they're going to have at least a six and six record and, and go to a bowl game. So I don't know. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, we'll put it that way and maybe leave it there. Uh, we'll have plenty of coverage still from this game at, at hailvarsity.com. Uh, Greg hosts a podcast weekly, the straight up breakdown. So make sure you're checking that out. If you haven't before, uh, you can also check out the I 80 preview uh, each week. Next week we'll be, we'll be talking about Fordham. So Greg, thanks for joining. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks.